Hello from your National Weather Service. Here's a look at our winter and spring outlook. A way to transition where we've been, where we're at now, and where we're headed. Well, it's been a banner year of precipitation so far. The water year started on October 1st. You can see most of our area not only is above normal, but much above normal. In fact, our, some of our mountain areas are two to 300% of normal. And this is both rainfall and snow that has fallen. We look at snowfall in a variety of different ways. One of them is what's called snow water equivalent. This is if you take a core of snow all the way down to the ground and melt it, how much liquid content it is in there. And we compare that from year to year. And so we come up with a percentage of normal. And you can see back in, uh, on the left-hand side in January, a good portion of southern Idaho was much above normal for that precipitation snowpack, what we call the SWE. Transition a month later, a lot of storms came through. You can see that not only are we above normal, but areas that were just average are much above now. So in the big and uh, little wood areas, even the uh, Bear River is above normal. I think more importantly, the Central Mountains, you talk about the salmon area, they have rose quite a bit over the last month. We look at the Bear River, it starts over in Utah, and you can see that it's above normal there and transitions even into Wyoming. The upper Snook Basin, starting off the Yellowstone Plateau, is also above normal. In fact, the entire western United States has had a banner snow year overall. In fact, the Intermountain region, you can look at it, that it's much above normal uh, for that region. We also have another way of looking at that snow water equivalent, and that's a visual uh, picture of it. This was January 24th, just a month ago, across our region. So you can see there was a lot of low-level snow that had fallen, and our mountains were starting to... Uh, creep up there. Transition to a month later, some of that low-level snow has disappeared, but look at how much has occurred in the mountains. You can see that a large portion has occurred up in the central and even in the Yellowstone and Bear River basins. A couple of our big flood seasons, one of them was in 2011. This is what it looked like back then for snowpack, and you compare that to now, you can see that uh, overall we're running a much above where we were in 2011. Another big flood season that was out there was 2006, and this is what it looked like back then. When you compare that to now, Central Mountains, we've gained a bunch in the central area from Chalice down to Arco. And then even over in the uh, eastern part of the uh, area, you can see a lot more snow over there in Wyoming, and then even in the Bear River Basin in two, from 2006. So where does that lead us? Well, when we look at this low-level snowpack, we have uh, observers that are on the ground. You can see down in the Bear Lake region, our observer in Bern only has about 12 inches to go to break their all-time snow record in that area, which occurred in that winter of 2010-2011. Idaho Falls, they're on pace too. They only have 10 inches to go until they break their record. And Pocatello, just a mere 12 inches to break their all-time record of 93 inches. And that occurred back in the 1992-93 season. But I think the biggest one to look at is Stanley. Now, a month ago, I showed you this image. They only had a 27 inches to go to break their all-time record, which dated back all the way to 1921-22. So where are we at today? Brand new record. In fact, we far eclipsed where we were back in that particular winter season, and we're still climbing. We've got another month or two to add snow up in the Stanley Basin. Here's another way to look at snow. This is actual model depth that's available out there. This was back in January 24th. Remember we had a lot of snow through the Snake River Plain and look how some of it has melted off over the last month but we continue to gain up in our mountain regions. We also need to look at how much water is in the uh, river basins. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation runs a web page where they show you what is in each one of the reservoirs in the Upper Snake. Uh, we'll say that they have started to release water in preparation for that runoff season and so if you do live on some of our uh, riverways, you will start to see rises occurring on the main stem rivers as they start to make those releases. So we've looked at where we've been. We looked at where we're at. Where are we going to head to? So over the last uh, several months, we've had a La Nina pattern, which typically uh, allows us to be cooler than normal and weather than normal. And that La Nina pattern is going to be ending over the next month or so. And so that's going to help transition where we're going to be headed. So as we look at the first uh, week or so of March, you can see that we continue in this cold trend with storms coming out of the Pacific North or the, the Northwest region. And we're going to be below normal for our temperatures over that time frame. And we are going to continue in that wet pattern coming through over the next week. In fact, over the next two weeks, cooler than normal temperatures, 
and whether the normal flow continues for us as we look into the first uh, couple of weeks of March. Overall for the month of March, we we'll look at typical weather uh, temperatures to be about typical for this time of year as we start the spring time frame. And that wet pattern is supposed to be shifting a little bit off to the east, but I wouldn't be surprised if they'll move that back over us before we're said and done at the way these weather patterns are setting up for the month of March. How about overall for the spring time frame and the temperatures over the next uh, six to nine months? As we start the three month outlooks, you can see that typical temperatures are expected for us for the spring time frame. As we work our way towards summer, we are expecting to be maybe a little bit above normal for uh, temperature wise. And that trend continues into fall and even winter time frame. Precipitation wise, we're going to continue in that wet pattern as we uh, go through spring. And that's not necessarily good for us because we've got so much snow in the mountains already. We continue that wet trend and we could have some problems developing. In fact, that continues even as we get into late springtime, April, May, and June. So we transition into summer time frame, uh, potential drier to just to the west of us, but overall for central and eastern Idaho, a typical uh, summer ahead, and even to fall and winter time frame. So in reality, we don't have any drought problems that we know of over any of the state of Idaho. In fact, most of the United States has uh, no drought problems or improving concerns overall. So we've showed you where, we're, where we've been with the snow, where we're currently at, and what our forecast is. So I think we want to talk now about what is our flood potential indicators and where we're headed uh, for our area. So we are working with our various agencies. These are things that our forecasters and hydrologists look at. And I think as managers in your area, you need to be concerned with this. So we still have our first flood potential, and that is we still have a lot of low-level snow that melts off, that needs to melt off. And so you can look over our area. This, this is our most concern for the month of March because we've melted most of it in the Snake River Plain. There's still some out there, so you need to be aware. But this is our next transition region that's going to be melting, more than likely starting around St. Patty's Day, maybe a little bit before, but starting about St. Patty's Day and on, you need to be aware of your area and how much snow you have and how that's going to melt off. As we transition out of that low-level snow, we still got the mountains to melt off. Then we got to start thinking about our streams and main stem rivers. These are some pictures that occurred both in that 2006 and 2011 season. And remember, our snowpack now is exceeding both of those for this time of year. And with that wet trend going on, there's a pretty good likelihood that we are going to see some flooding in our stake in our uh, river systems. In fact, this is our picture working with our staff here. We have two exceptional areas of concern that. If you live in these basins, you need to be taking precautions right now. That's the Bear River Basin and also up in the Upper Salmon and the Stanley Basin. Those two areas definitely going to have some flooding. Definitely really need to be preparing right now. Our best potential besides those are those areas in the red. So in the Goose River area, the Portneuf and Willow Creek, up in the Teton Basin, and I think two areas that are continuing to grow concern for us that may be working towards that exceptional are the Lost and Wood River regions. So you, if you live in the Lost or Wood River, you really need to be paying attention over the next month as how those storms come through. And then overall, when you look at the other locations where it's the Lower Salmon, the Henry's Fork, or even the Main Stem Snake, those areas we're starting to grow concerned with as we continue to grow more and more snow in the mountains and it's not melting off. We are going to continue our weather briefings. You can uh, join us every Monday and Thursday morning at 8.30 in the morning. For these particular briefings, uh, you can contact vernon.preston at noaa.gov. He will send you additional information on those live briefings. And more likely with this flood season coming up, we will continue those briefings on into uh, May and June as we go forward. In addition to that, every morning before 5 in the morning, we do a, a recorded briefing and we put that on our webpage. So if you go to weather.gov slash Pocatello, you can click on the lower left button, the word weather briefing, and be able to get that uh, weather briefing uh, at your convenience. And we do that every morning before 5 in the morning. We do appreciate your feedback. You can always contact a forecaster 24 hours a day. You can send us pictures or videos. We can put those onto Facebook or share pocatello.weather at noaa.gov. And if you do need to talk to a forecaster, 208-233-0834 gets you a live forecaster 24 hours a day if you ever have questions or concerns. Well, we appreciate your time uh, listening in to our uh, uh, briefing today, and we will do provide this again about a month from now, and uh, we'll let you know where we're headed for the rest of spring. Take care, and we'll talk soon.